Welcome to the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, home of the number one team in the nation. And you know how much the College Football Playoff Selection Committee rankings mean in here for the Ohio State Podcast. <laughs> that is Bill Landis. I am Austin Ward. It's Snap Judgments. It is brought to you by Byers Auto. So uh, here's the quick hitter. Does any Do any of the players care? No, no. Yeah, no, no, they don't. No. Did Ryan Day care? Sure didn't. Sure didn't. What are they worried about? Beating Rutgers. Beating Rutgers. All right. That's yeah. the... Those are the bullet points Did for I pass? that. I Beat R doesn't even make it onto the board on a Wednesday yeah, night, by the so way. Yeah. So November is about focusing on the block O only and then trying to get Ohio State healthy. That conversation starts with the quarterback. Bill, what did you hear, learn, observe from Kyle McClellan? I mean, he had his ankle taped, which is not uh, unexpected. Watched him like throwing a little bit, seemed comfortable. You know, said said the company line that everyone's saying that, you know, you play through it. It, it sucks. It hurts more uh, sometimes than it does at others. But um, seems like uncomfortable maybe more than anything else. I don't I don't I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but it seems like not not so much like, you know, intense pain as it is like, man, this is a little bothersome. So, yeah, we wanted to figure out both from him and Ryan Day like, if it impacted the mechanics, if that was part of some of the inconsistency in it. Both of them seem to say, no, that's not really it. And Kyle McCord's approach was to that to that was more learning how to play with it because he's been doing this yeah. since Notre Dame. And he said he he felt like he was getting better at that uh, and, and getting more comfortable with it uh, over the last few weeks. And then it was the setback on that scramble in the third quarter. And uh, he's like, well, do you have to relearn how to do this all over again? It's like, not necessarily. But he he indicated that from what we saw, in the fourth quarter and then walking down the tunnel there on Saturday night at Camp Randall, I think, you know, people saw some of that footage, you know, with the ice bag and, and limping very heavily. He's like, he expected it to feel worse on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. And then tonight, than it did. So he felt like he kind of dodged a little bit of a bullet. And I think maybe in real time, it was perhaps more of a shock to him, but that's good. Didn't, didn't say, you know, he wanted to come out of the game. In fact, Said he could definitely play through it, um, and still was still was going to, still did, and he's still gonna do that on Saturday at Rutgers. It is a thing. I heard um, it was an NFL player, it might have been Jason Kelsey, talking about like you get hurt, and on Sunday, like the adrenaline gets you through it. Maybe a little something else gets you through it, and then <laughs> what could for, that be? Yeah, you know, drugs. Um, <laughs> on uh, like, and then you like practice on Sunday, and that helps for Ohio State's purposes. Like Monday, you don't do anything. I can imagine like coming out on Tuesday and being a little concerned about what that might feel like but and we didn't get to watch practice right we just saw him kind of walking around out here on wednesday afterward but i wouldn't say that he looked like out of the ordinary he was walking moving fine throwing fine like moving his feet fine in terms of mechanics as a quarterback so i think it, i think it's one of those things where like he's good up until the point where someone bangs on it again and then you got to figure out how to play through it but um i really don't i don't i don't think it is tremendously impactful on his throwing ability but i'm sure it impacts it on on certain throws Devin Brown was back in the black non-contact uh, jersey, so we saw him throwing after practice as well. Uh, but So where Kyle McCord just has tape on his ankle, Devin Brown had tape and a pretty bulky brace. Looked like it was protecting the high ankle there, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of a, a limp there. So you know, Ryan Day's um, evaluation of that was get him back out there to practice, see how he responds, then make a decision and a and determination later in the week on if he could potentially play on Saturday. But given the nature of the injury, uh, you know, if it was close for him and then Kyle McCord and Devin Brown were the same, like it's hard to see how he could come in and like help in the red zone. Yeah, right. Uh, this particular week. Now, I don't know. It's only Wednesday. There's still two more days after that. It felt like when Ryan Day says publicly it's going to be a couple weeks, usually you can take that to the bank. Uh, so this he's only missed the one game. Uh, I think he's probably more likely than not to miss the second, but he is back at practice, so that that's a step in the right direction. And Ohio State's trying to get a bunch of guys closer to full strength by the end of November, not trying to take anything to, for granted against Rutgers, but that's yeah. that's where the target lights are. Yeah, I mean, they're then like it sounds like Emeka Abuka is kind of doing his stuff at practice now, and no one is saying like he's definitely going to play, but everyone's talking as if they're expecting that to happen. And of course, like Ryan Day kind of let that out of the bag when he said. He could have played last week if they wanted to play that cautiously. So we, I didn't see him. Did you see him? I saw, he was one of the, the – the wide receivers came off one of the first groups, but I, I saw him. He was in full uniform. Kyle McCord said that 
he looked fantastic in practice. You know, how excited he was to get him back on Saturday if he plays on Saturday. He said that that he looked that way in practice last week too, and he thought he was going to play before they ultimately decided to be cautious. So yeah. you can understand that approach, but it's gosh, it certainly feels like a safe bet right now. Donovan Jackson said something similar. He said like uh, getting a Mecca back is going to be whatever. Then he stopped himself. I mean, like if we get a Mecca back, it's like <laughs> all right, we, we know what the deal is, and it's like it's about right it's the, the timeline. For like an ankle sprain, whatever, whether it's high, low, whatever, it's been three weeks now, right? So that that I think matches up with what you'd expect, which is why like I don't Devin Brown, if like Kyle McCord looked more or less comfortable to me, Devin Brown did not look comfortable and certainly could not play with the apparatus that he had on his leg if they had a game tomorrow. But I guess that can progress and, and get a little better. But if if there was any thought on Tuesday, like, oh, Devin Brown might be available to play against Rutgers, maybe do the red zone thing or like spell Kyle if something happens to Kyle, I actually don't think that's likely to happen. Yeah, we'll see. And then one to, to monitor that's just been kind of hinted at by, by Ryan Day in Ohio State uh, was Cade Stover battling through some sort of injury. That would appear to be his knee. Uh, that I would not even necessarily be a new thing that he's been dealing with. Mm -hmm. Another thing that dates back to the Notre Dame game for him, although he was hiding it quite well for several weeks and still being, you know, had some of those productive games of his career running free, but you could tell that it was bothering him a little bit more on Saturday uh, at Wisconsin. And he was, he was walking pretty gingerly, one of the last people off the practice field on Wednesday night. I would never in a million years suggest that an injury would keep Cade Stover out of a game uh, if he was still walking and able to function on those two limbs uh, or have the other two limbs working to catch the football. I think he will run and try and block and catch the football until somebody kills him. What was the, what was the Jeff Brown line in the, when he was in the XFL? Like, uh, do I or do I not have air in my lungs? <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. Cade's got air in his lungs. He's, he sure does. I, I would also be surprised if he doesn't play. I think it, it'll be interesting to monitor because like last week they didn't, I guess they haven't really had him pass protect all much all year, but I think he only did it like three times on 28 or so pass plays. Last week against Wisconsin, he was out on the route more often than not, almost all the time. And I felt like maybe they weren't asking him to run block as much, but like now it makes me want to go back and, and look at that and maybe chart that a little bit to see if they're trying to, I don't know, protect him a little bit in, in that area, especially like, you know, G Scott's coming on and I think blocking pretty well, or at least better than he has previously. So, there's an ability there, I think, to spell Cade a, a little bit if they want to. Not not play for Cade, but like when you're playing the two tight end stuff, maybe like put G in a spot to take on the brunt of that more than Cade. Cade well, let's let's spitball this since you brought it up, Bill. So some of the creative things in the run game and the orbit motion with Xavier Johnson, and mm -hmm. there was the the toss play. I think there was maybe you know trips formation where they tossed to that and had wide receivers yep. out. Bar. I don't. Maybe Cade was involved with that. I, I it's again a thing that we could have checked before talking about it right now, but. Maybe they stumbled upon some other concepts while trying to work around Cade's yeah. injury on Saturday. That's just a – I'm just thinking out loud while you say that. Yeah, maybe. It's a happy accident, I guess, <laughs> if, that, if that were the case. But they, it certainly felt to me like they found something with those plays. Um, and and they have, like, a Mecca coming back, and I think Travion can do some of that stuff. Like, Travion got the, the pitch that you're talking about, but – the orbit motion stuff, whatever they want to do on the perimeter, like they're getting their guys back who I think could be dangerous in those areas of the field. So, like, one, good if that's protecting guys who are a little banged up, but two, maybe that helps the offense take another step forward. All right. What else did you learn tonight? I'm very curious about um, – I'm not trying to – like, I've asked, like, a bunch of here new questions this week, but, like, I feel like part of it's like, am I wasting my time? But I'm interested in the idea of, like, guys like that – finding an opportunity to step up a little bit this time of year. And it's I think Hero is one. Maybe, maybe it's mostly on defense. I think Jermaine Matthews could be another one. I know he's played a lot, but like now that they're back to full strength, the corner, can Jermaine still play a handful of snaps here or there? I think on offense, the closest you get to a guy like that is, is Carnell Tate, who mm -hmm. Ryan Day was asked about tonight. Like, And it's a, it's a good question. Like Now that Emeka Ibuka is, is we're assuming back, what does that mean for Carnell Tate? Like, does does his role sort of stop here? Does it become anything more than what he's been the last few weeks? And Ryan Day said, like, no, we still we still expect him to be a part of the plan. So, like, are there are there any other guys like that on this roster? And I asked Ryan Day specifically about Hero Canoe, and he says, like, you know, Hero had been doing it in practice, so we gave him the opportunity in the game, and then he performed in the game, so he's probably going to get more opportunity. Are there other guys on the roster who are in similar positions? And I'm not saying like take a starting job or or suddenly become a you know, a big time contributor, but, but, but just play, frankly, like in meaningful moments that we haven't seen so far this year. Well, I think if, 
if some of this injury conversation is designed to get to the last game of the regular season, then the load that Tyreek Williams has had to take on and Ty Hamilton's had, uh, Mike Hall talked about still trying to find the next level uh, with, with Larry Johnson and like his technique and that he's been jumping out of some gaps. Like that's, that's such a taxing position. And if you are in a situation against Rutgers, Michigan State, and Minnesota, to get a little breather, not only is Hero Canoe coming on, but the people in this building are absolutely raising, raving about Caden McDonald. Like, it, it's not a f- situation they found themselves in in terms of the depth a year ago where guys were actively pushing uh, and could maybe meet some of the burden, if not at a full All-Big Ten, All-American type level the way that Tyreek Williams has had. They were trying to do that anyway with yeah. some guys at, at defensive tackle, and I think that was one of my biggest frustrations with a year ago. So I'm not, I'm not on alert for Hero to be playing in the first quarter of the game on Saturday or, or maybe any of these. But it, if you get into some point in the third quarter and it's a two or three possession game or more, like there doesn't need to be any more like don't free 91, lock up 91 <laughs> and let these other guys go. Like I am – America, I am advocating – in November for a little bit more defensive tackle rotation. Like I'm it. on the record. You can tell whoever you want. I'll tell Larry, say, hey, you can you got my blessing. You don't care if I give it to you anyway, but <laughs> like, how about some of these other guys? Cause it does look like they're coming on. Yeah, I, I think who Ohio State is playing factors into that too, because we were talking the other day, like if you could draw up a November ramp up to the Michigan game, it'll probably look something like this. You're not you're not playing tremendously good teams, but Rutgers wants to run the ball a whole lot. Minnesota in three weeks definitely wants to run the ball a whole lot. <laughs> Michigan State, yeah, we'll see. But um, I don't know what they do. Yeah, I don't know what to do either. Um, they they get spied on by some guy with sunglasses and cameras <laughs> inside of them. Apparently, do you have a camera in there? No, there's no cameras oh. in here. I can, I didn't know that was a thing, so I learned something through all this. Well. And that's he, what's important. He's one of the world's greatest spies. <laughs> yeah, he is. He knows every trick in the book. Where yeah, it's sunglasses at night is never conspicuous. Um, they're, they're playing some teams that want to run the ball a whole lot. They're, I'm not saying the games are going to be overly physical. That's just a lot of at-bats, you know, defending the run, which is, is takes a lot out of you. So if they can get a tackle or two to step up and play a little bit more, I think that would be tremendously helpful. Okay. I asked, uh, since we were – positing about what could happen in the nickel. I asked Davis and Igbenosin about his availability for that, if need be. He said he had not been repping it, but he was not worried if that's what they needed from him because he said in some of the corner overlooks, he's playing in the slot anyway. Yeah. He feels like – so, like, that's not necessarily the same as, like, the full run-stopping load on in that position, but uh, I don't know that that's who they'd be looking to ask to do that. Although you look at his physical frame and his willingness to tackle anyway, yeah. I'm sure he probably could. I, th- I think he could. I, th- I think you you were right to mention him the other day when we were talking about that because I didn't immediately immediately go there. But at his size, and he's definitely a willing tackler. I think he's actually a really good tackler mm-hmm. for a corner. We probably don't talk about that enough. So um, there, I would imagine they would very much just like to play Jordan Hancock there and keep Sonny Styles back. But right. if they had to do something else, I, I think Davison would probably be the first one up unless unless Jair Brown is healthy and available he wasn't last week and we don't know what's up with him but beyond him I think Davison probably be the next one yeah and I guess the other option like Malik Hartford has been banged up for a little bit he mm-hmm. played early and then they kind of pulled back on that um and with Jihad Carter out like that safety spot's got a little bit stretched but if there has been one thing that this team has talked about with Tim Walton and Perry Eliano dating back to spring it's like hey we we'd like to see some of these corners play in the nickel and like that's where the most of their depth is. Like, yeah, they, if they have to borrow from there, I think that they probably could. Yeah, they they could. That's the. It's weird because I, it's been a 180 from last year. Like the yeah. how how I feel about the depth they have on the back end of their defense because I didn't believe in any of it last year, and now I'm <laughs> like, oh, they lost Lath and Ransom. They're fine, which is like a crazy thing to say out loud. But and it's not. I don't mean to be disparaging towards Lathan. They need him back, but yeah, um, I think they're situated okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, Donovan Jackson talked with him briefly. Um, just kind of echoing what Ryan Day said on, on Tuesday about feeling like the offensive line is is making a little bit of progress running the ball. Um, it's a lot of stuff they've said for the last few weeks. Like they, they feel like they have a better plan now. They feel like they're repping the things that they're best at more in practice and maybe not being spread so thin, like trying to 
understand a bunch of different concepts and then not running really any of them effectively during the game. I think that's been streamlined a little bit for them. And, and, I, and I do think you're seeing some progress. Like Travion Henderson makes it look better because of his explosiveness. But I also thought that that was the most they've moved the team this year and probably the you know least amount of decision making, I guess, a running back had to do in terms of finding a lane to run. So um, just monitoring it. They're playing another good defense this week. Yep. Rutgers, Rutgers stops the run too. So um, they'll have to bring it again to, to run the football effectively. Yeah, it's... I think it's a little bit of a sneaky matchup in that regard. Uh, Rutgers has played good defense. They don't have the same caliber of athletes. Certainly they don't have an offense that would be able to trade points in an, in an old school uh, Ryan Day style shootout. Right. Um, I'm not sure if that's what it'll be, but uh, the Buckeyes are two practices down uh, and another day closer to getting to New Jersey for that matchup Saturday at noon. Uh, thanks for joining us for some snap, snap judgments in here on a Woody Wednesday. They are brought to you by Byers Auto the best place in Central Ohio to buy a new or used car. That is Bill Landis. I am Austin Ward. Thanks again for joining us. We'll talk to you later.